One of her older brothers was my roommate in college, my freshman year, when you have to room with people at Alabama. And Sarah was already at Auburn at this point? No, no, she was in high school. Okay, so we're four years apart. We're four years apart. (laughs) So I went home with him on a weekend one time, and I met her, but she wasn't on my radar because she was... I was 15. a sophomore in he college. He was on my radar, was... but I wasn't on his radar. <laughs> yeah, she was like 15. Because yeah. he was a college, my brother's college roommate. Yeah, so. there you go. We are all saved the same way, but each of our stories are different. This is My Grace Life Story, a series of podcasts where members of Grace Life Church of the Shoals share their stories of redemption and grace. Here now is Senior Associate Pastor Matt Fowler. All right, welcome back to another episode of My Grace Life Story. I have with us this morning Reese and Sarah Shirey. And so we're going to talk and chat a little bit about their time at Grace Life Church. And Brother Tim is with us as well, so he's going to be giving us some input along the way. So, guys, let's get started with this. And Reese, I'll let you start if you would. Give us just a, a quick few facts about yourself, who you are, what you do, maybe a couple of facts about the family, and then we'll go from there, all right? Sure. Like you said, my name is Reese Shirey. My wife is Sarah. My family's been here for over 20 years, but currently I own and operate Turbo Coffee in Florence, and I've been doing that since 2014, 2015. So that's what I do on a daily basis. Good. And then uh, raising three kids with Sarah in the, in, in the meantime. All right. How old are the kids? Oldest is Frances. She's three. Okay. Dean is two. And Harriet is 10 months. So you're very much in the midst of raising children, right? Yeah. We just passed. We had three under three. Yeah. And so Franny's three now. So okay. it's. Yeah. I remember Kristen at one point had four under four. And it was, uh, yeah. And I always told Kristen she had the harder job, right? I would leave every day. Yep. I would come here, do what I was going to do. And then I would get home. And I could tell Kristen was just, that was a phase of life that was really tiring. Oh, yeah. So, um, all right. Good. All right. Sarah, a few facts about yourself. Well, what we just talked about. We've got three little ones, so I stay at home, and I tell people I make disciples and make snacks all day. That's what I do. I go on bike rides and just cleaning dirty fingernails. I mean, it's just, (laughs) that's what goes on my day-to-day life. I feel like it's not much, but it's a lot of work all day. (laughs) But yeah, in the meantime, when I have spare time, I like to exercise and read and I really love to cook and um, make bread and just homemaking. It's okay. kind of what wow. I love and uh, just yeah. kind of weird stuff, I guess. Okay. Like I like right. to have a garden and just yeah. do kind of old fashioned stuff. So mm-hmm. when I have extra time, yeah. <laughs> which is not often, well, but the kids are involved in all that. Oh, yes. So. I make them be involved in it. Well, and before kids, you were like, cook extraordinaire for turbo right yes. so you did sure. that for a while before kids came so that's uh, people still ask me are you still making cinnamon rolls i'm like well at home yes but <laughs> not me. at yeah that's I'm the very t- one who called her you know hey like not at turbo but at home she's raising kids not, sin- not bread stuff. dough yeah at turbo <laughs> yeah all right good all right good okay so reese let's start with you because you're kind of a as far as your grace life story you are a lifer to a yeah. certain degree i mean sure. you've been here a really long time and then eventually we'll kind of move over here to Sarah because she's more of the new person here, even though you're not new anymore, Sarah. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, how your family came here. So how old were you when you guys came to Grace Life Church? What what church had you come out of? You know, things of that sort. How did you guys get here? Give us a little bit of that story. Yeah. So we were living in Haleville. That's where I was born and raised. My dad had a, a company down there and my mom was raising us at home. We were homeschooled. But we were doing all of our activities up here in Florence, the Shoals area, with our homeschool group and swimming. I swam for 20 years, so that it took up the majority of my time. But we were coming up here every day, and we had some friends that were attending Grace Life. It was obviously First Baptist at the time. Again, this is 24 years ago or so. It was probably so. I think when we started coming here, we attended some VBS. Okay, I was around seven at the time. So probably 97, 98. Okay. We weren't, we were going to church in Haleville. We had attended a Baptist church down there and, you know, we had gone through preschool there and, and it wasn't anything like what we, you know, how we live and, and interact with the Grace Life family now. Right. It was, I don't know, it was just different. There wasn't a home base kind of feel there. Okay. So I think my parents were looking for that for a long time. Looking back now, I could, I, I definitely remember that. 
So we attended off and on, but my parents were super faithful, teaching us scripture at home, but we didn't have that home church feel. Even as kids, I, I, I kind of I kind of felt that as well. So we started coming here with some friends, and, and what I remember my parents saying was, we knew this is where we belonged, and so much so that my family ended up moving up here right. in 2000. Okay. So we've been here over 20 years. Um, I think that's, we may have joined the church maybe a little bit before that, but I know we were attending, you know, every Sunday right. by the year 2000. Yeah. But I remember specifically, man, I think it was 98 or so, I was probably eight, but we were attending a revival here. Brother Jeff was, was preaching and that was one of the many times that I walked down the aisle. Mm-hmm. I had, I mean, I had walked down the aisle every chance I got. You know, right, you raise right. your hand at VBS sure. if you want to be saved, pray this prayer. Yeah. And I remember that. I mean, just as early as I can possibly remember, six, five, six, seven years old, doing it every every t- every time. I didn't right. know how it worked. Yeah. So yeah. I'd figured, why not just do it every just time? Keep, just keep getting it. Right? Yeah. Just yeah, keep and raising what, the hand, keep walking the aisle. At some point, it'll take exactly. Right? So. If somebody, at some point, it'll take. So. I didn't understand that aspect of it, but it's funny that the reason I remember that one specifically, because I was baptized that year in in our baptistry. But what's funny is it may have been a Wednesday or something like the first night of the revival. I went down, you know, I got taken back to the counseling rooms. You remember how we used to do it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But what's funny was... The next day, like Thursday, probably, I guess, I tried to go again. And right. my friend was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you, you went down last night. You did that already. Right? Yeah. And I was just like, at that point, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. You know, I was, again, about eight years old. But so I, that's kind of my earliest Grace Life memory okay. was around 98 and, and right. attending that revival. We had done some, I think. We had maybe Spark used to be here. Is that what it's called? Awanas? Awanas, yeah. Yeah, so that, mm-hmm. we had attended some of yep, that yep. off and on when I was younger. Remember the old vest? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all yeah. kind of a blur from <laughs> okay. back then because I was really young. But anyway, so the year 2000, I know for sure we were, we've been attending, you right. know, yeah. ever since. Yeah. Uh, we joined the church. And so we're being homeschooled. I did that all the way up until end of my 10th grade year. And my brothers had gone off to college, and I was really close with them. And Austin was trying to get a scholarship to swim in Alabama. Yep. I was obviously swimming. That was my job. Right. I was swimming twice a day, every day. And I knew that I wanted to swim in college, and there wasn't really – I was training basically by myself here at Sheffield. And so we were approached by a family that we knew really well that homeschooled, but they lived in Chattanooga. And we had just known them through swimming, swim meets um, and stuff through the years. And they were like, hey, we, we go to this really, really amazing school. It's a, it's a private boarding school. They offer financial aid. I don't even know why they reached out. I really right. don't. It, was, it wasn't even on our radar that I should move off somewhere. And it, I, I'd have some conversations with my parents about, hey, how, I've seen Austin do this. Like, there's, there's no real way to get recognized from a college aspect, being a homeschooler, right. there's no way to showcase. I mean, you can go to swim meets, but they're not yep. really there watching you. So we knew that kind of ha- something had to be done. We just really had no clue. And so we went up and visited the school. The school's called Baylor. It's in Chattanooga. Uh, it was, I mean, the first time I went, I was just like this. It's, it was the coolest place I've ever been. It, I mean, it, it lo- it's like super old, like castle buildings right on the Tennessee River. I mean, yeah, absolutely wow. incredible. And, it, I mean, in God's sovereignty, I, he wanted me there, so he provided the I mean, right. we're talking about tens of thousands of yeah. dollars a year to go to this school, and we practic- practically paid nothing. Yeah. So he provided the, the means for me to go. and. So was that really different? Like, so, so you finished high school there? No. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, so the I next started two years. Yeah. Okay. So I went there starting my eleventh grade year. Okay. So two thousand seven. So I went oh seven oh eight, and then I graduated in oh uh, nine. Okay. So was that like really different? I mean, because obviously I know how close you were with with your brothers, and, and yeah, so you guys as a family have always been really close. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're like, it's not just that. I mean, you went 
a few hours away. Right. You're, you're in a boarding school now. You're not homeschooling, away from family. Was yeah. that a big adjustment, or was it just like, hey, I'm here. I'm going to do my thing? And no, it was huge. It was the, obviously the first time that I'd really ever been away. I mean, I'd you know, gone on trips and stuff, Boy Scout camp, and, you know, weeks at a, or a week at a time. But this was the first real time that I had left home. I mean, it's kind of like going to college, yeah, but sure. you're not you're not prepared for that, really. Right. I mean, you kind of get thrown. You're, a, you know, 16 years old, and now right. you're going to live alone. Yeah. You know, in a in a in a dorm with a bunch of other 14, 15, 16. Sure. Years. So it's yeah. it, it was like a, it was completely <laughs> not an easy adjustment. Right, right. You know, there were times that it was. You know, I talking about the other day how you on your if your mom would come pick you up. Yeah, you so my mom would get me. Home, you're like, I don't know if I can yeah, do this. Yeah, I, I began to have some real anxiety through a lot of that just because I had never. I mean, I I, I went there to swim. Right. Obviously, the, the education was amazing, but my, the goal for me at least was get into an environment where you're going to be exposed to colleges all over the cross yeah, across yeah. the country, and you know, get a scholarship. And the program is, is is nationally famous. I mean, we won two national championships, high school championships, while I was there. I mean, they, my my roommate was German, and we we had kids from the Bahamas, France. We had kids from all over the world right. coming to not just swim there, but be athletes there or just go to school there. Yeah. It's a pretty amazing place. So definitely top five coolest things I've ever done. Mm-hmm. But in the early stages, it was it was hard. I mean, I would go home on the weekends sometimes to come back to church or just to visit my family. And I, my mom taking me back on Sunday afternoon, I'd be crying in the car, but like, I, I don't think I can go back. Right. It was, yeah. The swimming was just brutal, like more training than I've ever done. I'm having to live in a dorm with, you know, people I've just begun to know. And it was hard. I mean, cause yeah. I've been Big homeschooled. Big changes, right? Big, Big changes. changes. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I did, I did all that. And I think that's, that is probably, again, I, I don't, I don't, know exactly the day I was saved, but I know that that's when God began doing the most work in my life. Yeah. That's when I began seeing the most. He, it's kind of that he kind of brings you at your lowest point sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that was probably, it was, it was some of my highest moments in my life, but it was also some of my lowest. Mm. Yeah. Again, because there's a, you, you can get super lonely right. in, a, in a place like that. God really began to work in my life there, and I began to basically just depend on him because I, again, I, I, I was experiencing things I'd never experienced before yeah. and being exposed to things that, you know, I, I didn't know I was going to be exposed to. Right. Yeah, sure. But it did make going to college a breeze. I mean, right. college was easy after that. I mean, even, even the get a scholarship, I got a full ride academically yeah. and athletically to, uh, Alabama. Yeah. So it obviously paid off. But yeah, no, the schooling in Alabama and even the training was was easier than what I experienced in high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so so you finish up there at Baylor, you get a full ride to Alabama, so that's a blessing. And so yep. you go, you swim at Bama. Yep. You finished with what degree at Alabama? Was it in business? Or yeah, was it was degree? entrepreneurship. So, entrepreneurship. Yeah. Okay. So so exactly what I'm you know I wanted to open my own business. What that's what right. I'm doing now. Yeah, got you. So so let's let, let's fast forward to you leave Alabama, you finish, you graduate from there. But where does the Lord kind of take you from there? And then how, how do eventually do you get right back here to the shoals, kind yeah. of where we started this thing? So I moved back right after college. I had begun making ice cream in college, selling it on the weekends. I, that's what I started doing after college, started making ice cream. I did that for a year here at in the shoals. And then... You know what happened there. Yeah, can, can, Do you want like, to go through that? Well, maybe not the whole story, yeah. but yeah, can you touch on you know a yeah. little bit of what happened with that? Because that obviously was it was a pretty big deal, and that yeah. was maybe at the front of some of what our culture is just going headlong into yeah. now. So this that was, was a this was 2013, 2014, yeah, and just through maybe some social media posts. I mean, people people in this area, I guess we 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 all of a sudden had I'd moved back, and now all of a sudden I'm I'm in this community. As a business owner, I'm I'm really pushing my product on social media. And so ice cream was a hit. It was a hit. By the way, yeah, yeah. it just took off. So. It took off. So it, it got it got super popular. People knew my name. When that happens, a lot of time, some people once they realize you're a Christian, for whatever reason, they start coming after you. Right. And that's essentially what happened. So, being going to Grace Life and being a believer, and again through maybe some posts on social media. 
by me, my family. There were some posts that people didn't like about our view on homosexuality and, and marriage. And so it was, I mean, I got a call from Fox News. People began, you know, bashing showery ice cream. I got a call from Fox New York about wanting to interview, interview me about it. Right. Uh, it was written in AL.com about how we're bigots and haters, right. and which none of that is true. Yeah. It we obviously was, believe in the biblical view of marriage, but yes. we don't. We're not yeah. hating anybody. That was a that was like a firestorm. Though. It w- happened like, very quick. Because I remember we were at a farmer's market, and that next day, you said, I think I'm going to lose my business. And I said, I'm, what are you talking about? He, and you were just like, there's just some stuff going on. I think we're going to, I think I'm going to lose this business. And it was uh, by yeah, the weekend, I had I think. Yeah, I had some products. I had my, my, my product in some stores, some other farmer's markets, and all that was pulled they contacted me and said hey we're not gonna yeah you can't sell your product here anymore and so that happened in a matter of a couple days right and I didn't I was I was uh, part-time coaching the swim team here and other than that I really didn't have anything else to do and so I didn't really know what to do Sarah was at Auburn at the time and so I moved there for a year and that's when I got into coffee something that I had wanted to do for a long time but didn't really have a means to do it and I moved back and uh, after a year and started attending here. Again, I, I'd been gone two years in high school, four years in college. I right. was here for a brief time after college. Right. And then I moved away again for a year. And, yeah, we got married in 2016 after she graduated, and we've been here ever since. Okay. All right. So, so at what point now, Sarah's a swimmer too. <laughs> so, obviously, you know, guys are both swimmers. So, at what point did you meet Sarah? You know, how, how did how did you guys' relationship progress? Uh, how you know, old what, was, what was I when like? you met me? Fifteen? Yeah. Her brother, one of her older brothers, she has seven brothers. One of her older brothers was my roommate in college. Okay. My freshman year, when you have to room with people. At Alabama? At Alabama. And Sarah was already at Auburn at this no, point? No, no. She was, was in high school. Okay, so we you are, were four years we're apart. We're four years okay. apart. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I went home with him on a weekend one time, and I, I again, I, I met her, but I she wasn't on my radar because she was, I was 15. a sophomore in he college. He was on my radar, was, <laughs> but I wasn't on his radar. Yeah, uh, she was like 15. Because yeah. he was a college, my brother's college roommate. Yeah, so there you go. Jake brought him home. You know, yeah, Jake didn't have visit. a car, so Reese had a car. So I drove him home one weekend just to yeah. visit his family, and we were we were best friends, I and mean, we were really close. So uh, Jake but and we I. we didn't reconnect until my two, I mean, senior she was, year in yeah, high school. Yeah, 18. Okay. Yeah. We started kind of talking more when okay. I was 17. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah. So how long did you guys date or court or whatever? Four years. Her, we dated for four years. We started dating right as she was going into college. So her we four years We spent my whole senior year texting each other. Okay. okay? We, right. He was in college and I was at home. I was homeschooled. Right. And I was kind of going through the same thing, like with swimming, trying to decide where I wanted to go to school. And we had connected at a swim meet like the summer before. Yeah. We both went to summer nationals out in California. And so he was the only one there from his team, and I was the only one there from my team. My dad was my coach. And so my dad was, yeah, come along with us. And I was yeah. like, sure, come yeah. along with us. Yeah, <laughs> you can go out to eat with us tonight. Yeah. And so uh, we kind of connected on that trip. And then we started, you know, we got each other's numbers and started texting each other. And I kind of started asking him advice about where to go to school because – he was in Alabama, and I didn't know where I wanted to go, and I was taking my recruiting trips, and you told me not to go to Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I ended up going to Auburn, not just because of that. I really right. loved Auburn, and yeah. Alabama was going through some coaching changes. Right. So it was kind of an unforeseen. I didn't know what I was getting myself into right. with that situation. And so I decided to go to Auburn, and then we spent four years. Long distance long dating. Long distance dating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But – one year of it, you were in Auburn. Yeah, I moved to so, Opelika, which is right outside Auburn, to work. But yeah, we spent a year. But yeah, my so, in the same my town, senior year, we were kind of just texting each other. We weren't really dating, but we were just getting to know each other, and we realized we were like the same same person. Like we liked so much of the same stuff, and we just loved talking to each other. And so, really, our friendship grew before our like we started dating. Yeah. We were just like best friends. Really, I yeah. feel like. That was sort of a blessing because I'd always, I never really had many friends growing up, and I always just wanted like a best friend, and like that's what the Lord gave me through Reese was just somebody that was my friend before we were even dating, and then 
that summer I was talking to Jake, my brother, who was his best friend. And I was like, why hasn't Reese asked me out yet? Like, what is he doing? <laughs> so you need to go talk to him. And so Jake was like, okay, if you want to date my sister, you can date her. Yeah. Yeah, it gave, is kind of touchy. We were the close. Yeah, yeah. Brother and I were really there, close. I didn't want to, like, overstep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But got, Jake was like, it. if you're going to date anybody, like, yeah. I want it to be him. Yeah. So... That same day, Reese was like, okay, do you want to go on a date? And I was like, okay, yes. <laughs> I was living in New York. I went, also, my brother was living in New right, York, right, but right. I went to live in New York for four months that summer. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. That's so he came like. So he I, came I was like, when my, I get back from New York, I'm going to come see you. Yeah, he came, got back from New York. And before I went to school in August, he came to my parents' house where I was living right. <laughs> and yeah. asked my parents if he could date me. And then we went on our first date and we just dated long distance. We saw each other probably every six weeks. Yeah, it was. It was rough. Yeah, pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, so now, Sarah, since you're in the picture, yeah. um, at this point, right? We've kind of come to this point. So, uh, a little bit about you know growing up, Sarah. I mean, obviously, you sure. know, we already mentioned you had you know pretty big family and yes. things of that sort. But uh, a little bit about first, growing up, yeah, yeah, you know, how you came to faith, how you came to know the Lord. You know, give, give us a little bit of your testimony there. Okay, yeah, we have a very similar story, really. I have a big family, like you said. I have seven brothers, and I also have two sisters. So there's. Ten children. <laughs> um, my parents are first-generation believers, both of them. So hmm. they were are just the most faithful and servants, and they love the Lord, and they love Scripture, and they taught us that from an early age. And I'm just blessed that they're my parents because that's where I, I learned everything was in the home. And I, we were homeschooled, and uh, my mother just— I don't remember a morning not waking up, and she wasn't reading her Bible. Hmm. And— the first thing we did, we did our chores, and then we sat down at the table and we did Bible. And that was just instilled for, in me from an early age. And we went to a Christian Missionary Alliance church mm-hmm. growing up. Yeah. My grandparents were a part of a Christian Missionary Alliance church. They're kind of old church. school. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of them around Yeah, anymore, my parents so. still go there. And it's sort of like a grace life, but very small. Right. Just families that are all intertwined and, mm-hmm. you know, just we did Awanas, so we were there every Wednesday night. And... We did that, and I have, I'm have in the middle of my family, so I have some older siblings. And once they got to the, where they were wanting more, they kind of we kind of fell into the trap of they were wanting the, them in a youth group. And our youth group at Christian Missionary Alliance wasn't great. Right. And so they let them go to a different church to go to the youth group. And I think that's kind of where a separation took place in our family. And it's mm-hmm. some a trap that I think a lot of people fall into is, well, that church has a great youth group and their friends from school are going over there. So let's let them go over there. And I, at the time, was probably seven, eight, because my sister's eight years older than me. So her and her high school friends were going to this other church. It kind of split us up a little bit on Mm -hmm. Sunday morning. Some people were going here and some people were going here. And I just remember like the early years in church was so much better because we're all together and we were right. all going on Sunday mornings in our big white van <laughs> that had a hole in the floor, but we were all going together. Uh. And and I didn't really realize, I was kind of looking back on my, you know, testimony the other day because I had to give it at a small group fellowship. And I kind of right. realized, like, I wasn't in a church like Grace Life from when I was probably eight years old. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even think about that. But it was kind of like Sunday mornings, like, okay, are we going to this church today? Are we going to that church today? And then, you know, I, like Reese, there was a lot of times as a child that I was saved, okay? I heard a song on the radio about I'm the door. If anyone enters through him, he shall be saved. And I remember that resonating in me and wanting right. to be saved. And I remember one night going to my mom saying, I want to ask Jesus into my heart. And her coming into my room and asking Jesus into my heart. And then mm-hmm. I got baptized. And I do believe that, you know, I... I was saved at a young age. I don't know the exact day, Mm -hmm. but I know that it's been um, a a long process of growing and sanctification. And I think when I look back on my life with swimming and just Awanas, I was always doing things because I wanted to be good at something. I wanted to memorize scripture because it looked good for me. Look how many scriptures I can memorize. Look how well I can swim. Look how fast I am. But it was all for me. It was all pride based and right. it was all self serving. It wasn't serving the Lord out of a heart that loved the Lord. It was serving out of a heart that loved myself and wanted right. myself to be glorified. And the Lord thankfully kept me from a lot of things in life. And um, when I got to high school, I started going to high school. I went to ninth and 10th grade and I realized, okay, I can't just act like I love the Lord. Like this is real because there's, once you're, when you're at home, it's easy to 
be a Christian by yourself. Right. But then when you're at, around people that you have to make a decision, am I going to live like the world or am I going to live for Christ? And am I going to live for myself or am I going to live for Christ? And we're still kind of in and out, not in and out of church, just different churches, right, you know, like right. we'd sometimes go here, sometimes go there. But I knew that I, I wanted, I knew that I loved the Lord and I wanted to know his word and I wanted to serve the Lord. And so it was just one, then I got to college and I also, I didn't have a car, so I didn't go to church. When the one year Reese lived there, we went to a church down there. But other than that, I wasn't in a church and I was a, around people. I mean, I'm on a swim team of what, 60 people? And I think one other person was a believer. Wow. And so when you're around these people, literally like probably six hours a day, well, more because you live with them. Right. It's hard to like remember what <laughs> what you're supposed to be acting like because you're not you're not in church and you're not in. You're immersed in the world and not. Yeah. yeah. You're not surrounded by believers. Yeah, we're, right. We're right. kind of blessed here, grace life. Yeah. Yeah. But all that to say, like, I, I think the Lord like showed me during college, like, just a lot, teaching me a lot about like evangelism and praying for the lost and my roommates and just like you have to really be serious <laughs> about this. You can't just act like a Christian, mm-hmm. you know. Amen. So I don't know the exact date that I was saved, but I do know that I am <laughs> and that it was just a process. Right. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that's good. And, yeah. and you know, I know in my own personal testimony, Sarah, I I, I had some of that same kind of spiritual pride. Mm-hmm. I often tell people I was I, I was a, prone to be a people pleaser, you know, whether it was a coach or whether it was a teacher or family, I, you know, I want to do this. And, and and so much of it was not about, you know, I want to do this because this glorifies the Lord. But it was like, but hey, that kind of that kind of helps me, mm-hmm. you know, look good and all of this, you know. Yeah. And, and there was this, you know, and when the Holy Spirit, I know, was was beginning to convict me of sin, a big part of that was just kind of the spirit peeling back that pride in my life. If you know, Matt, everything's been about you. you yeah. This hasn't been about living for the Lord or glorifying God or trusting Christ. This has been about mm-hmm. what what can you do next to try to show that you're able, you know, to kind yeah. of live this life. And, you know, and then the Lord just kind of slowly but surely kicking all that out from under me and saying, look, you can do nothing to, yeah. to and really you did, please me. You'd be just so. like when I was living with these girls, I thought, I would be just where they are if it wasn't for the Lord. It wasn't like I've done something for myself. It wasn't like I always thought I was better than people because I was, you know, able to do all this stuff. And I would be just where they are if it wasn't for the Lord. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Good. Okay. So so how long have you guys been married at this point? Six years. Six Six years now. So, okay. So, Sarah, since, you know, Reese, you know, has been here a really long time. But (laughs) uh, I'm always interested in the folks that kind of come in, you know, later in life, like like you have. Um, What what were your your, your first, what was your first experience here at Grace Life? Do you remember anything (laughs) about that day, a first small group class, a first sermon? What what was that like? I would come in sometimes into small group when I would come visit here. Okay. And I would be in. um, So this is when you're still in college. Yes, with Katie Lee. I would just go. Go with Kate okay. Lee right. to her small group. Gotcha. And I really liked it. And I would come in Wednesday nights when y'all had we had the old chapel, right? And all those flags were up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very Christian. What you call it? Christian, Christian missionary. Life. Yeah, very yes. similar. Yeah. We have flags in yeah. our church. Okay, all yeah. right, yeah. But you know, I didn't really think much of it until we got here, and I was more in church all the right. time. And I honestly like I t- hadn't been. In a church. In a church since you were like Faithful to a church. To a single church, yeah. In, in a while. And it was kind of difficult to begin with because I had been on my own and doing whatever I wanted. And when we, you know, marriage itself, the first year is right. kind of difficult. Yes. yes, And I just didn't understand a lot. I didn't understand why we were going every Wednesday night and why we were, you know, Going small groups at 9 a.m., being here yeah. till noon. And that was regular stuff for you, Reese. Oh, I yeah. mean, it was just like, hey, this is just the ebb and flow of what we do. Yeah, yeah right? I didn't. So, yeah. I hadn't been in um, expository preaching since I was like six. And like, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand right. church discipline. I didn't understand a lot of things. Yeah. And I, I had questions about all a lot of it. And I, I think I bucked up against some of it, too. Just, you know, why do we have to do this? Why do we, why? What's so important about this? Right. And thankfully, Reese graciously explained <laughs> a lot of it to me, and the Lord showed me and softened me to it and helped right. me understand. And now it's like, 
why wouldn't I want to right, do this? Right. Like, yeah. uh, we love being here. It's the, you know, the best place to be, really. Right. So it was just sort of like an eye-opening experience to what the church should function like and what a healthy right. church looks like. And mm-hmm. um, I didn't understand that until we first got married and we were here all the time. Yeah. Reese, what was that like for you? I mean, so, you know, as you're trying to, you know, as God would call us to as husbands, you know, lead your wife. And obviously this is something you're accustomed to. You know, you'd been here 20 plus years and now Sarah's kind of she's in it and and not against it, maybe, but just kind of like, man, this is a lot. You know, what what was that like for you? How how was that kind of leading her through that transition? What did that look like for you guys? Yeah. So, yeah, she didn't have a mean spirit about it. Sure. Yeah, it was just more of like. I mean, every Sunday night, every yeah. <laughs> Sunday morning. Right. Yeah. Not that she didn't want to go. She's like, I guess it can seem, if you don't understand why we do what we do, it can seem sort of legalistic in a way. If you don't, right. if you don't just have that. What I explained to her was me growing up here and, and all of our, like all these families in here are so close. It's like we do our life through this church. Mm-hmm. And we go to work. We we do our life through the church. Right. We do yeah. our life Amen. with these families. This is, it, I don't remember who said it, but it, probably Brother Jeff, but like we moved back here. We could have moved anywhere, but we, we moved here because we wanted, to, we wanted to be in this church and, and to revolve our life around that. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like I mean, yeah. what Brother Jeff would say, like you find a church and center your life right. around yeah. it. Amen. So that, that's what I explained to her. And, and once you grasp that and once you can see it, it, again, pr- probably the first year, it, it takes a while. Again, she did, it's not that she didn't want to do those things, but until you see it lived out, right. like the people in this church do, then you get it. Well, it mm-hmm. takes work, too. It takes, yeah. like, give, not giving up stuff, but just being here on Wednesday nights. Like, it's easy to just say, oh, well, we're going to be, you know, we're already right. running late on time. Yep. But it just takes work, and, and you see, like, you and especially when so you much. add those kids in, yeah. to it. Like, there's a whole other element to it, yeah. right? So yeah, Wednesday nights are a little crazy. <laughs> We're three children that want to eat dinner before we get here. It's yes. like just uh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just finding places to serve. That's been the biggest blessing. Is right. like starting with just serving. And I remember like someone asking us to serve in the nursery, and that was the starting point. Yeah. And you know, I think that's just the minimum you should do, you know, it's not just like, yeah, well, once we started doing that, I mean, it was, I mean, it was smooth sailing that from there, as far as like, her, I, I don't know if this is the right way to put it, but her buying in, right. you know what I mean? Like yeah. to, to what, to how we should operate here as, as right. servants in the church. Cause it, you don't know until you get in and serve. I mean, once you start doing that, it's, it's like, man, what have I been doing this whole right. time? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so so Sarah, you mentioned some things that were kind of new mm-hmm. to you, you know, expository preaching. Although you'd been in it some, hadn't experienced that for a while. Things like church discipline. What about some of the, like, like the doctrines of grace? When you know, when when, when things on the sovereignty of God were taught. I mean, was that something that was that common wasn't in Christian new missionary to me. Alliance? Yeah, so, no, okay. I understood all that. I okay. mean, my my pastor growing up, he's kind of he preaches very similar to Brother Jeff. Okay, it was just sort of more of how a church church functions because I had been out of it for so long and you know why we do you know sometimes like we would just stay at home and watch church online and that was church too right and you know that's kind of my understanding of what church was was it can kind of be whatever you need for that day yeah or that weekend the the, your some of your siblings would call it cowboy church that was cowboy church (laughs) it was mostly like if we were to swim meet all weekend we got home and but no I understand my my mother taught me all of that. I mean, yeah. she has a very good understanding yeah. of Amen. scripture and yeah. studying scripture and grace and sovereignty. And uh, no, none of that was difficult. It was okay. just sort of the just the, the day ebb to and day. flow of church life, yes. church functions. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right, so so what what about now? I mean, what what are you guys involved in here at Grace Life? I mean, where you serve? I mean, obviously you guys are you know you're still probably young married couple, mm-hmm. right? And and kids and things of that sort. But but you know, in what ways are you guys serving at Grace Life right now? What does it look like? So I'm teaching. I'm one of the leader small group leaders in the twelfth grade. Okay. Boys class, and I've been there since, uh, for five years. Okay. So we didn't we weren't serving outside of the nursery. I don't think our first year, and then. I think our second year of marriage, we got the call 
from Brother David. The call. Yeah, the call. The call. Or the look. I was at Some work. people have the look. Yeah, you know, I was at work. From Brother David, yeah. yeah. So. I was working was at Turbo, and I, like, answered my phone at work. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, and when Brother David calls, it's not really, like, an option. It's like, hey, I'm going to ask it in the yeah. form of a question, but really, you're going to do this. Oh, yeah. Right? No, I knew so. that I was teaching. You know, I, I got the call in, like, maybe June or July, and by August, I was yeah, you helping in, lead so. the 12th grade boys. Yeah. So, what's, so what's it like leading the 12th grade boys class? It's great. I, I love it. I you know, I I told Nathan I'd I'd stay there for, yeah. You know, until I become irrelevant to yeah. You know, I'm st- you know I'm I'm 31. I'm kind of still relevant yeah. to high schoolers. Yeah. So sure. yeah. You know, maybe when I'm 60, I'm no longer relevant to a 12th <laughs> right. grader. Yeah. But no, I love it. I I love that that age group, mainly because again, going back to my my experience at Baylor and and basically being thrust out into the world, mm-hmm. and I, I just know and I remember exactly what it's like to leave home to go from again being a christian at home is very easy right the hardest thing to do is just obey your parents which yeah. is very hard yeah but that's that's your biggest sin point again you mm-hmm. know but when you go out and you get out from under that protection of your parents you get exposed to so many different things and and so i love being that kind of like last line of defense yeah. for these guys mm-hmm. before they go out into you know, college or the workplace or wherever. Right. And so it's, it's, it's a great place to be. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Great. Sarah, what about you? Are you currently serving any role? I mean, well, obviously you have kids and that's busy and things yeah. of that sort, but uh, this year I took the year off. Okay. Not really. I had a baby. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it hasn't off. been off, but uh, we had Harriet in August. So I said, I'm not going to be teaching this year because with three under three, you know, everyone's, oh, yeah. someone's sick every oh, yeah. other week. Absolutely. And then, um, with just a baby, it was, Having her in August, too. But before that, it was, I've been with 6th grade, I've been with 11th grade, I've been with 7th grade girls. Okay. Yeah. And next year, I'm going to be with 11th and 12th grade girls. So okay. I'm super excited to be back. And I just, I really like being with the high school girls just because I like to show them that, you know, the value that the best blessing in life is having a family and having just being a woman. And I just want to show them that. And before they go off to college and try to seek something else. And it's just, Mm -hmm. that's just not where your, your joy is going to be found. Your joy is going to be found in just being a woman of the Lord and embracing that. And that's just what I love to teach these girls. And I'm excited to go back and Hopefully not have a baby again <laughs> yes, year, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't need four under yeah, four. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so we've just been in the nursery all year long. Yeah. Well, I have. Yeah. And I've done some some times I sub for people in the okay. children's church or just sometimes I'm in the two-year-olds on Sunday right. morning when someone needs a teacher. So just yeah. wherever I can go this yeah. year. Okay. All right, so, so both of you guys and your testimonies and, and just in your – your your life story have have over and over again talked about um you know the the role your parents played mm. in your lives the role your family played in your lives so how how, how does grace life hopefully we're doing this but but how does this local church family and it could be anything from the preaching to the the fellowship you have here the relationships you have here but but how does how have you guys seen that that's helping you because you have 3 under 3 in this really busy season, how, how is Grace Life helping you guys, equipping you guys, preparing you guys to hopefully, you know, fulfill Ephesians six to bring your children up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord? How, how does that look in the the Shirey household, and how does Grace Life play a role in that? Well, I, I mean, I, again, I, it's it's lived out by the people here. Mm-hmm. And so when you see it being done by other parents, and we we've had such great models with our parents. I mean, her parents are great, I and mean, they're they're godly they're godly people. And they raised great children, and I could say the same thing about my parents. Right, uh, and we all go to church here, and so the the model has been set just by our parents alone. And then, when when you've got people your own age that have kids, and and you you, you see how they live and and how faithful they are, and that's one of the reasons that we love coming to church here is because you can look across the aisle and be like, you can count on them being here. Just just that accountability by itself is right. is a good thing, but. Yeah. Just that encouragement, you know, when you see other other people raising their kids in, in, in the fear of the Lord, it's, you know, it makes it, it, it just gives you a good model to follow. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy mm-hmm. to get to think my life is too hard to be focused on these things. And you get caught up in the things of the world that you're supposed to be doing with your children and they need to be, do, be able to do this by this age and then this sport. And 
then like you come here and you're like, oh, right. This is what we're supposed to be doing at home. Yeah. And I recently wrote out this quote that I have hanging up in my kitchen. It says, how we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. And mm-hmm. it's just something that I've been thinking. There's no time except right now to teach my children the things of the Lord. They're not, I'm not going to wait till they're eight. Right. I'm not going to wait till they're 15 and can understand God's sovereignty. I mean, they right. can't truly understand that when they're two. Mm-hmm. But what I can teach them now is just the seeds and that's where when we're coming yeah. to church and we're around people with young children, if they can do it, then I can do it. So I, That's one reason I, I think that I've never really had, a, even when I was lost, I've never had an issue with this, the sovereignty of God. Mm-hmm. There's things that I don't understand. None of that, like, there's no, I don't have these deep questions about, like, why would God do, why right, is he like right. this? Why, does the, why is he like this in the Bible sometimes? It, just because my parents sowed those seeds, which is what we're trying to do, with our children, yeah. even when they're Amen. toddlers, so that it's they they just trust God in all things. Like I don't have to worry about things that I may not understand or or or, or any any difficult question because God is is in control. He's completely sovereign over everything, and that's just something that I hope we can instill into our children, just teaching them day in and day out, and just. They're already asking you, us, why do we go to church? Yeah, like when you on get Sunday up morning, and, yeah. why are we going to church? <laughs> yeah. And so you're kind of like taking it back. You're like, yeah. why are we going to church, yeah. Reese? Let's because you have to answer it for a three year old yeah. and you want that answer to be something that's important. And, and kids have like the hardest questions. So, like I can remember, especially when my kids were younger, mine are older now, but I remember sometimes they would ask things and I would be like, Man, how'd they think to ask that, <laughs> yeah. you know? But but you're right. Then you have to frame it. Yeah, okay, how do you frame this for it's a not three-year-old just from, a, we go. You know, from a biblical perspective, right. but in yeah. a way they could understand? And right. so, yeah, it's challenging sometimes. So. It's challenged yeah. us having children. For sure. Yeah. Brought yeah. out a lot of things that you, you think you're good, kind of good in your, you know, your walk with the Lord, and then you have children, and you're like, just shows you something that you need to address Some in your life. you need to repent in. Yeah. Yes. Every day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I always think of Ephesians 4. I, I know, you know, when we think about, you know, sanctification and our growth in the Lord, I, I know a lot of times we, we, we quickly move to, you know, our personal Bible reading, our personal prayer time. We think of those personal mm-hmm. spiritual disciplines. But, you know, in Ephesians 4, you know, the Apostle Paul seems to frame a lot of our sanctification in the context of the church, you know. So as yep. as all of us are speaking the truth and love to one another, we're all growing into maturity in the Lord. And, um, you know, I think that's some of what you guys are, are talking about when you think about, you know, the— uh, the accountability, the models, the, those that you can look to at Grass Life. And I know for me, just as as a man, as a dad, as a husband, it's invaluable for me to just, I, not even that it necessarily comes out in some big conversation mm-hmm. or anything, but just to know, hey, the, the, the men of this church, this is who they are. This is what they're striving after. You know, so that when I do have those challenging days, it's not like, hey, I, well, I'm, I'm just kind of on an island. Who else? Well, no, there's a whole army of people here that are striving after the same thing. They're aiming at the same target. They want to glorify God. They want to do that in the church. They want to do that in their homes. And, you know, I I was fortunate from a young age to have a lot of older men that I think they just took the initiative and they just befriended me. And, you know, I learned from, you know, a guy like Brother David. And there have been plenty of others here at Grace Life that have have been, you know, kind of in my life. And I, I don't know, it just helped me through the years to kind of see older men Okay, this is what they've done. Mm-hmm. They've been through this phase of life. This is how they handled it. And, you know, and sometimes they're willing to say, yeah, I didn't handle it well. You know, <laughs> don't, don't do this, but right. do this instead, you know. And, um, just, and, and to have all of that with, with people that think from kind of a glory of God perspective is, you know, in addition to the preaching, in addition to the small group lessons, all of that, it's just been invaluable to me as a Christian and as a uh, you're just a disciple of the Lord, and then that just filters down into every phase of my Absolutely. life, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Like we're talking about, I said this morning, I was like, really, I think our grace life story is like, like how Scripture says all the time, to live a life worthy of the gospel. Like, grace life has equipped us for that and continues yeah. to. And, yeah. you know, you can't live a life worthy of the gospel just on your own right. or yeah. not going to church. You can't. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what it is here is just serving and you know, being in the nursery and serving in small groups and attending as much as you can. Like, that's worthy right. of the gospel. Yeah. Amen. 
Well, that's a good summary statement, I think, Sarah. <laughs> so you, you have brought us to a close here with this. So, uh, Reese and Sarah, thank you guys for being willing to come in yeah. and share yeah, with us a little bit you. about your thank Grace you. Life story. And uh, uh, it was edifying for me just to uh, hear how the Lord is working in your life and how he'll continue to do that. And so I know it'll be edifying for others as well. So thank you guys for being with us today. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you, guests. We hope you'll join us again next week for another episode of My Grace Life Story. As members of Grace Life Church of the Shoals share their stories of redemption and grace. To find out more, visit gracelifeshoals.org. This podcast is a production of Grace Life Media.